hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching full take few days back we created the review video for the rise dot 7.5 for the oneplus 9rt as you already told that the oneplus 9rt custom rom development is now on the peak and once again inferno and the rise dot team has given the new update of rise dot 8.5 on the 25th of the november our channel is mainly creating the regular updates video for the all the custom roms for the oneplus 9rt so I flashed the update and decided to review the changes in the new update, its performance and CPU throttling comparison with the old build of Rise.7.5, new features that are added in the new ROM and bugs in the ROM with my final verdict. Flashing of ROM is same as shown in the old video, you can check that from the iCard. Remember you must be on the Oxonus 12 before first time flashing of the ROM, so please follow the video as it is. If you are already on the rise dot then you just need to boot your phone in a recovery and sideload the package using the adb sideload command. So here we are already done the clean flash for fast boot. Now without further ado, let's get started. On the new adventure. On the new After completing the setup, let's jump to the about phone. In the about phone, you can check this is the same Rise UI 3.0 like we seen in the old build. This is the Rise 8.5 version which is based on the latest sources of LineageOS with the LineageOS sister egg. ROM is unofficially supported by the developer Inferno. This is the Android 13 based ROM with the same Android 13 easter egg. This is Rise 8.5 Mukapuno build. A security patch is of latest November 2022 while old build was on the October security patch. Build date of ROM is 25th of November 2022, kernel version is 5.4.191 which is same as the old build. This build is based on the latest lineage of sources. Now let's check out the performance comparison between the old Rise 7.5 and the Rise 8.5. Initial impression of ROM is very good, it's super smooth, highly touch sensitive, even the lots of the time single mistouch immediately opening the applications immediately. Scrolling, switching between the applications, apps opening, closing, all the things are super amazing. I feel this build is a lot more improved and stable as compared to the old build. Now let's run the Geekbench to compare the numerical results. When I ran the test, I got the score of 1104 for the single core and 3345 for the multi core. Where for the old Rise 7.5, got the score of 1089 and 3231 respectively. Though the difference is negligible, still definitely the new build is improved as compared to the old build. When I tried to test the GP performance, there is no option to switch between the graphics API like the OpenGL and the Hulkan in the new Geekbench application. Maybe they removed that option. So I ran the Hulkan graphics test and I got the score of 5170 while on the old build we got 5281. So there is a slight drop in the results here, but it has no effect on the GP performance. So overall, new build has a small underwood improvement as compared to the old build. Now let's see how the current build perform against the CPU intensive task. I ran the CPU throttling test on the 20 threads with the temperature display enabled in the setting. After running the test for the 5 minutes, I got the score of 90%. Overall, a graph during this test seems green without any heavy yellow or the blue marks. CPU temperature horizon from the 47 to 53 degrees Celsius. If you check the old build results, there you got the 89% of CPU throttling percentage, so it's almost same as the current build. So both the builds have the same capability of finding the CPU into the task. So what are the new features has been added in the new build? In the personalization setting and in the lock screen, we get the new fingerprint icons and the animation, which gives the amazing experience while unlocking the phone. There are a bunch of the new fingerprint icons and the animations available to choose. Some of them you can check on the screen. Under same lock screen customization, you get the ambient display which has the edge lightning feature but it seems that it's not working. I tried to check it during the incoming notification but it didn't pop up at all on the always on display. In the quick setting customization, now you get the data uses toggle to be displayed in the quick setting panel. We can hide the tiles label, we can change its size along with the alignment.
Instead of this, all the old themes customizations are available under the user interface that you already seen in the old video. Except this in OnePlus setting app, you get the alert slider setting. By using this, you can assign the alert slider for the different activities like to switch on the flashlight, changing the screen brightness and many more. We also get the Dolby Atmos setting here to tune your device audio along with the audio effects application in app drawer. Other touch panel settings are available here like the hyper touch, USB 2.0 fast charging, vibration strength control but these are all the grade off and not accessible. Maybe this feature will be added gradually with the new updates. Now it's time to check the bugs or the issues in the ROM. I didn't found lots of the issues in the ROM but the wide one is on L3 so you can't serve the Netflix or the Amazon Prime on the full HD solution. ROM didn't comes with the core recording feature in the dialer. Some other issues are found in the camera, ROM comes with the Lineage OS Griffin camera application which not even supports the 4K recording. So after using the Google Gcam MGC build, I found the Nightscape mode ported for the front and the main camera are working. While in the video recording, slow motion is also working here, you can check the sample. Time lapse is working but the issue found in the 4 k TFS recording it's still not supported here. Except that the wide angle modes, panorama mode, HDR modes all are working. ROM has the OT updater but ROM is not officially supported so it's not working. Except the issue all the things are working, no issues until now I found. So overall I have the pleasant experience on the new Rise.8.5. I can't able to review the battery performance of these custom ROMs because I was not able to switch between all my devices again and again. Still, I will try to give my verdict about the battery in the next video. Until then, if you think that I helped you through this video, then please do like, share and subscribe. Press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.